life after the lights. Mary Jo Buttafuoco was an ordinary mom and wife when one day a love-struck teenage girl tried to kill her. And now, more than 17 years later, Mary Jo is telling her survival story, new revelations, and why it took her so long to leave her husband, Joey. It was a tragic love triangle that captivated the country. In May 1992, 16-year-old Amy Fisher walked up to the front door of her lover's home and shot his wife, Mary Jo Buttafuoco, in the face. At Amy's sentencing hearing, Mary Jo's face said it all. I have constant pain in my head. Some days it is almost unbearable. Amy, dubbed the Long Island Lolita, served seven years for assault. Joey served four months for statutory rape. The real life fatal attraction became a national sensation. I hit her on the back of the head. There were three made for TV movies. Why would she shoot me, Joey? I don't know. To the shock of many, Mary Jo stood by her man for years until their divorce in 2003. Since then, her ex husband and Amy continue to make headlines. But Mary Jo has been quietly resilient, undergoing a transformation inside and out. It's what she calls her life lift cosmetic surgery, a new hairstyle, and even love. And Mary Jo tells her story in a new book. It's called Getting It Through My Thick Skull. <laughs> it goes on to say why I stayed, what I learned, and what millions of people involved with sociopaths need to know. And it's very it's, it's our pleasure to welcome you. Thank Mary you. Jo. It's really you. nice to How be you here. How you feel? How you look great? Oh, I'm here. I feel great. This is wonderful. Getting it through my <laughs> thick skull, that, that grabs people's attention. You like that? that, that uh, why, why did you name it that? That is an old family joke. Uh, as a child, I was quite rebellious in the 60s and in the early 70s. And uh, my mother used to always say, oh, Mary Jo, when are you going to get it through your thick skull that you can't, whatever it was, mm -hmm. wear makeup at 10 or wear, do whatever it was, get it through your thick skull. And after I got shot, I was in a coma for three days, and I woke up, and I looked at everybody around me, and they looked so distraught. I didn't know what happened. I knew somebody shot me, and I, I just looked around, and I thought, I got I to gotta defuse this, and I looked at my mother, and I said, you see, Ma, this thick skull really came in handy. <laughs> so finding the humor, even and they at that all moment. laughed, yeah. and I was like, and they all like, she's going to be okay, oh. and that was what I wanted to convey to them. Yeah. I'm going to be all right because it was frightening. As you, oh, of course, yeah. you you lived it. You know the number one question that women in particular ask you: Why did you stay with him more than ten years after this happened? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, there's a number of you know. It was never one easy thing. Obviously, life is not like that. Yeah. The first thing was I never knew what hit me. I mean, I'd never heard of Amy Fisher. I never knew uh, this. I was shot. I was almost murdered. I was very, very, very sick. Uh, other things were afterwards. My children. They were little. They were traumatized. This happened in front of our home. Um, so I, I didn't want to leave because of that. My Irish Catholic, God bless it, upbringing, where you don't get a divorce, you, you fight it through thick and thin. And then uh, he, another thing was, you know, he was a very good sociopath and a liar. You, you, and you, I believed him. I believed him when he said he had nothing to do with her. When you use the phrase sociopath, um, Joey had, had this in response. He says, as for her saying that I'm a sociopath, it would have been nice to have been diagnosed by a doctor as opposed to my ex-wife. I feel victimized by this. While there are so many truths, there are many more inaccuracies. He goes on to say, I wish nothing but the best for Mary Jo. It's the truth, and it's from my heart. Why do you believe he's a sociopath? Well, um, the years and years and years, it was my son who brought up, it mm -hmm. was a revelation. My son brought it up. He said, Dad is a sociopath and he's never going to change. And then what happened was when I thought about it and I looked on the internet and saw all the, I looked up sociopathic tendencies and I saw every checklist and I went, oh my God, this is what I've been living with. As far as a doctor diagnosing it, it is, is extremely difficult to diagnose sociopathic behavior because they can do it and get away with it for years. And it's not treatable. It, you can't take a pill for it. It's a way of life. It's a behavior that is in the brain. And when I, the stories that I wrote and some of the things that I thought back on, they, ne they don't have a conscience. They don't feel guilty. They, don't, they make mistake after mistake, and it, they say they're sorry, and they swear it'll never happen again, and it does, and it does, and it does. Well, your book goes on, to, and it's, it's, 
it, it really, you leave nothing unturned. You talked about how you were addicted to painkillers and going to Betty Ford and starting this new life and how uh, many of us in walks of life, we run across people like your ex-husband. Talk about your life now. Where are you doing now? Oh, I, I'm in such a good place. You know, there was a time, you're right, it, I, I wound up in the Betty Ford Center and I write about that. And right. that really, which what a, one of my lowest points, turned out to be one of the best things because they made me understand, Mary Jo, you've got to learn to live with what happened to you and accept it and move on. And through that, it got me stronger. It made me be able to leave Joe. I went on my own for a couple of years to figure out what about me, what do I want? And totally kismet, I met this wonderful man and he has been through a lot and we just fell in love and we've been together seven years now. Mm -hmm. And it's just, the total opposite of what I had. What I s try to say to people, you can get out of these situations and not go back to them. I it's something that everybody should read. Everybody knows a sociopath, whether you have a child who's a sociopath, a parent who's a sociopath. These are toxic people and they drain you. You need to move up, move away from them. Well, it is wonderful to meet you. You are, um, you're remarkable and your perseverance and we're so happy for you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. And you can read the excerpt of the book at our website. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thanks.